everyone. Welcome to the Lamb Podcast, episode number 114. My name is Ian. I'm Rob. I'm Derek. Let's... Oh, actually, I want to talk to you guys. Have you watched the Iron Claw yet, King? I've not. No. Have you? Do you know about the story of the Von Erich family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Dude, Rob, that movie is fucking... I had... I have zero knowledge of the Von Eric family going into this. I cried. I shed one tear. Yeah. It was gnarly. That's a good yeah. ass movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. Everyone uh Yeah, everyone did Yeah, played a good part. The mm-hmm. brothers, the dad especially, man. Oh my god. The guy um, from Mindhunter? <laughs> huh? The dude from Mindhunter is the dad, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um he just did good, man. They're they're dads. Yeah, he's crazy. The and dad, uh, like it's a good depiction of like you still love your your family, but it's also like a good mixture of toxic masculinity, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But man, that's a movie you gotta watch, dude. I'm on a good tear of movies that I have watched in twenty twenty four. Saltburn included. Mm. Um, okay. let's get into some MMA news um, PFL and Bellator are doing a little champion versus champions night um, have you guys seen the full lineup um, I've looked at the champion versus champion fights I don't know if there's any like extra fights other than that but like there's not a ton that interests me honestly like at first when I when I first heard about like the champions versus champions, uh it seemed kinda interesting. But maybe like the uh I think Welterweight who is it? Uh I don't wanna butcher Uh Welterweight is Magomed Magomed Jackson. Karimov versus Jason. Jason Jackson. Jason Jackson. I was gonna say Jared Jackson, like from the Grizzlies. It's a good thing I didn't vote. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh I'm kinda excited to see that one, but um the rest, I can kind of see how they would play out, mm-hmm. I feel like. Um, Clarissa Shields is on that card as well. She's going to be in the prelim bouts. So, um, I know that people have been kind of wondering what's going on with Jake Paul and uh, Shields and... I guess it was Francis, because we're still waiting for a Francis MMA fight um but yeah what are your guys' thoughts on just like they have all these big name big big name people but there have been no mma fights yet i think i'll say i think uh it's just it's just gonna take time bro like people forget like do you guys remember when they first announced like brock lesnar coming to the ufc and like brock lesnar even with like I mean, get it? He was coming from like WWE, but he was like an NCAA champion, and even that took time. Like the promo came out, and then maybe like a year, year and a half later, he made his debut. You know what I mean? And then like the CM Punk thing, like even though he took like a year or two, he should have took way more time. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it would have helped him, but he really didn't have any combat experience before the UFC. But um, I don't think like things like this should be rushed. Like these like big names. Uh, that don't have like a ton of MMA experience. Good for Clarissa Shields for getting back in there, dude. A lot of people like after losing like an MMA fight, especially like your top level boxer, would probably give up on the sport. Um, Jake Paul, he's like one of those dudes that you could pretty much have him fight. Like they're not going to give him like a decent grappler, obviously. Right. Uh, probably somebody else that's like a guy, a guy with good stand up with like I would say around like five fights, four or five fights. I, I would give him. And uh, Francis, I would say it depends on how this next fight goes. I, I definitely see if he loses to Anthony Joshua, uh, he turns around and makes his PFL debut. If not, he might run run another boxing match. Uh, there's tons of good fights out there for him to make, especially if he beats Anthony Joshua. So that'd be crazy. I think with Jake Paul, you really – I feel like it won't even be someone from this roster right now. I think that would have a whole big name from outside of the company. Yep. And give them a big check. As for Francis, I think win or lose with this uh, this Joshua fight, I still think I still think he's going to continue to get. He'll get a big boxing match after that, regardless of how this one goes too. Um, 
I don't know. Part of me thinks Francis doesn't want to go to an MMA fight, dude. This this money in boxing is huge, dude. Um, sure. But we'll see. Again, with Francis too, big name. You got to get a big name for PFL for it to be a Francis fight because it's already on paper that regardless, like that fighter is going to get paid good. They're both going to get paid good. So, mm-hmm. and that was. Um... That's what you're saying. Like Francis made sure that whoever he fought was guaranteed. Big okay. Um, and then, what are your thoughts on the the card, the champion versus champion card, Rob? Card in general, it's fun. It's fun to yeah. do something like this. It's kind of like oh, yeah. uh, kind of like Pride Day is just like mix and matching. Yeah. But uh, other than that, nothing special. Nothing special. Like I saw Tiago Santos and Yoel. I'm like, maybe um, like five years ago. Dude, right, it's yeah. just crazy because like none of the fights stand out to me. Like, uh, like obviously champion versus champion is a big deal, but like, um, th- and don't get me wrong. I do think a lot of the champions in both organizations are talented, but like the guys that I was really looking forward to, dude. Like uh, when I first heard about the merger, like Oliver Aubin Mercer retires, Patchy Mix. Um, PFL doesn't have a bantamweight champion. Um, guys like that, like I, I was excited for those guys, but they, they don't have any matchups. So. Um, and then uh, Kyoji Horiguchi, uh, he is the Risen champion. He he stated that he's gonna make the move to UFC again. Um, he already had his stint with the UFC. He did pretty well. He had a a title shot against Demetrius Johnson, but he ended up losing that fight. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Um, that division is just so packed right now, dude. Even like with Bautista, bro. Even just seeing Bautista this weekend, I was like, "Damn, he might be, he might be ready to go up there too." You know what I mean? Uh, I like that. I mean, Horiguchi against like. It's just rough for me seeing him lose to. Didn't he just get knocked out by Sergio Pettis last year? Right. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's it's hard for me. And don't get me wrong, Sergio Pettis is uh, one of the best in the world, I think. But I would put him like right. Give him somebody right on the edge of the top fifteen at bantamweight, like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. One of those guys, I would say. Um, he is a flyweight fighter. Oh, flyweight. Yeah. Okay, good. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Then, yeah, then I like him at flyweight. There's tons of fun fights to make a flyweight then. I think. Yeah. Um, funny you mentioned, like, Pettis, because Pettis kind of had his own story, too. Like, he wasn't doing too well in the UFC, then he moved over. He looked amazing. Yeah. yeah. He used to look amazing. So, yeah. Bring him in, dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Pettis and Horaguchi was at uh, 125. Uh, he did fight at bantamweight for a little bit, and then it looks like he's fighting in the flyweight division right now. Okay, I like him way more at one twenty five than one thirty five. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's way more fun fights to make there. Maybe uh, Manel can finally get do his fucking once one fight in every three years with the fucking Horiguchi dude. I wonder if um, because he did. I mean, his only loss in the UFC was to Demetrius Johnson. He was on a looks like a one, two, three, four, four fight win streak, got the title shot, lost, and then he fought three more times in the UFC won. So I Dude. guess it was just contract. He just wanted more money. They couldn't give it to him, so he he dipped, but I mean he I might have been great. wrong. He's, 33. he's he's young, so I might have been wrong, bro. But like before the Pettis fight, I remember telling you guys like uh, Horiguchi's a stud. He can come back to the UFC. I said he could compete with like the top five dudes in the UFC. Um, but his fight was crazy. But I still think he could compete, dude. Yeah. yeah. It is different, though. This UFC fight with division is different. So it is, bro. Every time we think somebody can cross over and, and do really well, <laughs> yeah. it uh, doesn't end up that way. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, so there's been people theorizing a little bit of conspiracies that Sean O'Malley, although he is a huge star, um, 
Dana likes to compare him at Connor levels, but um, we have seen that he does not make that much money for pay-per-views. So that's why they're super stacking UFC 299 to kind of bump up Sean O'Malley's pay-per-view popularity. Um, And it makes sense because who are the fans of Sean O'Malley? It's kids, it's teenagers that watch UFC pay-per-views for free online on fucking Back. Stream East or something. Buff buff streams, crack streams. Um, But is that something that you guys agree on? Is it uh, a little bit different? Um, I think Sean O'Malley is a great fighter. Um, and I think he's his own separate thing from Connor. They do try to compare him to Connor a lot, but dude, there will never be another Connor. The run that Connor had is there. There'll never be anything like it again. Mm-hmm. Um, but still a good fighter, dude. Still, I feel like does like decent numbers. I seen like the pay per views weren't great. I seen Aljo talking about like the buys weren't great, and he would have never took the fight if he he knew it was only going to do this this many buys and stuff. But um. I mean, we're not teenagers, dude. We're fans of O'Malley. We fuck with O'Malley, dude. Um, yeah, man. I, I just give him time. Just became champion. Uh, it's not like he was fighting superstars before that. Jan was like his one like wow fight. So just give him time, man. Still young, still time to develop as a star. So. Yeah, I think with O'Malley. Um... Although he just became champ, I think we're just seeing the start of it. He still has some obstacles to get through. San Hagen's one of them. Marab, we don't know if that's going to happen. Um, overall, a great fighter. And I get what you mean with the the fan base. That's like the that that's what Dana's targeting too. Is like that yeah. type of fan base, like with the Nelk Boys and Happy Dad and shit. Like it's just those, yeah, those dudes. Obviously, I'm a fan, but to compare to Connor now, where he's Nowhere near that. Nothing. We won't get another Connor for I don't know how long. Connor just once in a life. One of one of one. Master at it. He's a master, bro. Yeah. Now and another thing too is like like I said, like with the opportunities, like he really hasn't had opportunities because like that when Connor was coming up, bro. Like I understand like O'Malley is getting these knockouts. He's knocking these dudes out, but like. Connor, you know, like every fight there was something to talk about. You know, even like when he fought like Dennis Seaver, bro, flipping off Seaver at the at the uh fist bump, didn't want to shake his hand, flips him off, bro. Even like little stuff like that, every single fight there was something to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I think if he runs through Cheeto and he runs through someone like Sanhagen, then we can start talking about him like that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because I know he's calling out Ilya right now, and I'm like, dude, you gotta wipe out your division first, bro. Yeah. But that would go crazy, though. Uh, yeah, exactly. If, if we make that fight and Ilya, he could he could beat Ilya. He's up there, dog. Do you think it also has to do with this? Sound this might sound crazy because like we're a lot more we're we're not the casual MMA fan, but because Sean doesn't have that muscular build, he is fighting at one thirty five. So people like Conor McGregor, sure, it was like 145, but he he looked really good aesthetically. Um, welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, those are like the prime muscle mass looking dudes to to cater to the casual crowd. Is that could that be part of it or? I don't think that's it. I think the casual crowd cheers the punch, no matter who it is. If dudes are getting knockouts, that's what. <laughs> yeah, if if. Uh, if dudes are getting knockouts, uh, guys that like to stand up, um, that that's who that's who the casual crowd is going for. I think Dana sees like uh, potential in O'Malley and and his fighting style and um, just his personality, and he, he's just trying to push him. Yeah. Bet, bet. Um. All right. Let's talk about Ankalai versus Walker two. Um. Unfortunately, Manel Cop weighed in way too heavy. Uh, they did face off, so I don't know what happened. Was there some sort of health issue after they uh, weighed in and faced off? I'm not sure. 
Um, but fight didn't happen. They moved Jim Miller up to a Coleman event. Um, what do you guys want to? Shall we talk about? There's a lot of there's a there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, bro. Okay, go ahead. You start. Yeah, let me tell you, I got, I got. Uh, pretty much like the whole main card, bro. Like at least I got like uh, I got beef uh, posta. I was just about to say that. Yeah. What are we doing? And first of all, like you're not that guy. Like if I've ever seen a you're you're uh, you're not that guy moment, bro. It was here. You're fighting uh, Grandpa Arlovsky, bro. Not saying he's not a dangerous fighter, but you're doing too much, dog. If you're doing all that, a fight should not be going to decision. And you're too big to be moving like that, brother. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, take that shit somewhere else because I didn't want to see it. That shit was fucking goofy. Is that where we're starting? The Arvlosky? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. You can say your, 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 two, your two cents and then you can jump to another fight if you want. All I'm saying is like the last time I felt like that was when Cody started showboating against Trevin Jones, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same feeling. Like, bro, come on. What are we doing? What what have you done significantly in this fight to where you could be doing this shit? Yeah. <laughs> it sucks because like Andre's never been that guy. He he stayed composed. He didn't he didn't he didn't feed into it either. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough being an Acosta fan now after that one, bro. Yeah, it would have made sense if Acosta just like was bullying the fuck out of him, but he just wasn't. Like the punches he was throwing, it was Arlovsky was he was rolling with it, you know? It was partially blocked or he was rolling with it. There's nothing that truly connected him or rocked him even. Um so it's just crazy that he showboated like that and he couldn't even finish him. So blows my mind. Um, Bruno Fajeda gets the uh, TKO against Phil Haas in the first round. Is this the end of Phil Haas's UFC career? I seen something that caught me that hurt that I took personal. A type type of it, you know, if if the shoe fits, I fit the shoe. Somebody said Phil Haas might be the most overrated <laughs> fighter on the UFC roster. Why do we keep giving him all this praise and all this love? Like he's he's this good, and I'm like, damn, I do be, I do talk up Phil Haas. Like why? we all did. Yeah, I, I think we all do. And you know what I'm saying? And I think it's not just us. I think it's the UFC fan base as a whole, whether, uh, you know, you know, Phil Hall's like that or not, bro. But I don't know where the hype came from. I don't know when I was like, damn, Phil Hall's is that dude. Because time and time again, he's proven he's not that dude. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. Uh, I think this was a tough fight, you know. Uh I'd say give him give him a a guy in a similar situation that he's in, kind of on a losing streak. See how he does. I'd say if 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 it even he wins and goes to decision, that might be it for him. You know what I mean? But if he can get some kind of spectacular performance, uh, maybe they keep him because that's the only way I can see them keeping him at this point. Yeah, that was brutal, man. Um, as Rogan likes to say. Everyone has a punch ticket, and he can't keep taking like punishment like this, bro. Um, because you just go down that route, you just it's like when uh, Kasanga and I got that back kick to his face, dude. Uh-huh. Just never the same. Like, that was a big shot, but like Phil Haas is taking shots every fight, dude. Yeah, Damn. um, and it just takes a toll. Everyone has a punch ticket. I think, yeah, you do give him someone outside of the top 15, obviously. But man, he's gonna have to just play it safe now because that that knockout on Saturday was brutal, bro. Maybe Bruce. it's just the hair, dude. He looks too much like Kevin Randleman, so we're kind of getting some. Uh, <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> like, dude, this guy stuff. He has the athletic build. He looks great, but he just keeps getting caught. Passes the eye test, bro. He passes the eye test. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For real. Um, but yeah, I mean. Honestly, I would not be surprised if he was cut. I I sure give him one more fight. We'll see how it goes, but the dude has maybe one too many opportunities that he he couldn't uh capitalize on, so 
Sorry, Phil yeah. Hodge. Um, next, uh, Ricky Simon Simone loses to Mario Bautista. This was split decision, I believe. Um, thoughts on this fight? This fight was crazy. Tough because both these guys are so talented, bro. I think it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. You know what I mean? Banger back and forth battle, but bro. Batista looks good, bro. He looks good, dog. And in a stack division of guys that like it's very hard to break through because you're either ranked or you're not. I think I I think he could start uh fighting some some big name dudes. I think he I think he's that good. I don't want to hype him up, but I think he's that good, man. Um, also I like the uh the jump defense to the calf kick. <laughs> That was nice. That was nice. Bro, it's playing Super Mario, dog. Super Mario defense. I'm going to have to use that in foreign, bro. That was nice. You better add that to the next fucking game, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking. This shit was crazy. Dude, that first round alone, I'm like, how are these bantamweights fighting like this right now, bro? It's crazy. Um, But, man, the volume of Bautista was just everything. Like, Ricky Simone taking him down. And his, his his ability to get right back up and immediately start firing at Ricky Simone really threw him the fuck off, dude. Um, it was good to see. And I honestly, after this fight, start hyping him up because, dude, he his cardio looked amazing. Damn. It looked amazing in there. Simone started to break down at the third round, bro. And, like, fucking Mario, dude. He, he looked good. His striking looked good. Yeah, that defense was sick. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he's, he's just great all around. All areas of the fight, he looked great. Um, it was just a war, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, King was right. That was the uh, that was King's Coleman event right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Also, I wanted to highlight that. Um, I mean, Ricky Simone caught him with a huge uh hook when oh, Mario went for that. Jesus. And then in between rounds, Mario was like, "I can't throw that knee anymore because he's, he's gonna <laughs> catch me." So he ate that. Oh, yeah. My goodness. It's just good insight from Mario Bautista. Um, he really turned up the boxing too in that second and third round. He laced in some beautiful combinations. So I am very, very much on that Mario Bautista hype train. Um, and for him, for his next fight, looking at top 15, Pedro's at 11, but I think he has a fight coming up. Jonathan, Jonathan Martinez is at 12, Umar's at 13. And then Mario came in at 14 now. So, which fight are you looking for the most? Uh, man, I might even hop up. Huh? Do we feed him Umar or are we going into like top? I don't think I. Maybe Dominic Cruz? I like that. I do like Dominic Cruz. Um, no, never mind. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, Dominic Cruz. You know what I was thinking. You know what I was thinking. I like Dominic Cruz, dude. <laughs> I wonder, was Dominic Cruz's last fight with Cheetah? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was Cheetah. Dude's Feels like a long him. time ago, dude. Yeah, that was a very long time ago. Talk about Dom. He's replacing Rogan this weekend, huh? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. That's fine. I was thinking it's uh, the USA card. I know Joe. Bro, said never mind. Card. Yeah, give him Dom. I don't want to be. Never mind. No, yeah, give him Dom. Right. I'm. A, I, I was looking at some. I was looking at a name, and I, I caught myself. I'm glazing too hard right now, bro. I'm fucking. <laughs> I was like, Blade. make but reverse Figueredo, bro. But no, nah, that's it. Well, let me pump the brakes, dog. Don't pump <laughs> the fucking brakes on that. Um, I think I think Dom's good. It, he can. Dom can still present. Some dangerous things. In and for real, for real, for real, for real. And the striking wow. and the takedowns and the wrestling, Dom can still present. He's still a threat. Yeah. But um, as we've seen in the past, if he wants to strike with Bautista, it could, it could be bad for him. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Before Dom, I mean, Cheeto's about to fight for the title. Before Dom got knocked out by Cheeto, he was uh, still fighting, like up-and-coming dudes. <laughs> like guys that I thought were going to be a problem at Bantamweight still – I don't even want to call it gatekeeping because he he was beating these dudes like convincingly. So, um, yeah, don't get it twisted. Dom is still nice, I think. 
Oh yeah, it was Dom. Yeah. He fought Pedro, right? Pedro caught him early, but then Dom... Pedro, and then he beat uh, Stamen, Cody Stamen. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cody. Yeah. I, thought, I thought Stamen was the truth for a minute, and I, I mean, I still think he is really good. So, um, all right, our co-main event, Mister Jim Miller, gets the third round submission, dude. I only got one thing to say about the fight, bro. Put him on UFC 300. What are we doing? Put him on UFC 300, bro. Please. What are we doing? Be. Huh? It has to be. It has to be. You got to put him on it. We're or we ride. Right. We ride in the street. <laughs> um, the whole time I was watching the fight, I was like, man, this dude is so fucking inspirational. Because it's not like we're watching some. How old is Jim Miller? Jim is. 39, 40. 40 years old. It's yeah. not like I'm watching a 40 year old fighter. Mm-hmm. But this in dude f- throws heat. Yeah, this bro. That's so Chris, his techniques are beautiful. Um, the crazy part is, though, like how long he's been doing it, bro, is how long he's been able to sustain like that style, bro, is crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all the people he's fought, uh, the wars he's been in. Um, and, and he's still finishing, guys. That's my back. My back hurt this morning rolling out of bed. And Jim Miller's is submitting guys still. That's crazy to me. That's because of your service, guys. Thank you for your guys' service. <laughs> um, I mean, even before the fight, when he comes out skipping the Bad Moon Rising, I'm like, God damn, dude. God damn, I want to go fucking work out. Like. He, he's still keeping up with these guys, bro, and he has so much time for 300, bro. Just throw him on there. Mm-hmm. I got to ask, would you, ever, would you rather see him fight Matt Brown or Paul Felder? Oh, Ooh. wow. I think... Both bangers, dude. That's... Yeah. Dude. I think Matt I Brown, think. I think. I don't know. I think. I think Paul Felder would be great, though. I know. I do. Both are bangers. I'd be happy with. But I would rather see, but I would also like to see Matt Brown on UFC 300 over Paul Felder. I think. Mm. True. But I know that Paul Felder has that little, just that little little bug that he wants to get back in. So mm-hmm. he's I in the pool, see. right? He's in the testing pool, right? Is he? I think he's back in the testing pool. Oh, okay. From what I've heard, like the way he was talking about, it, he was so interested, and yeah. Matt Brown's like. I could, if you put me on 300, I could use that as my retirement fight. So, oh, yeah. See Beautiful. what they do. That'd be great. See what they do. If we could get a fucking just Jim Miller versus question mark, and then we'll find out as soon as that walkout song comes in. Oh. Paul Felder takes off the headset, unbuttons his. <laughs> <laughs> they go crazy. Royal Rumble, dude. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. Um, but yeah, Jim Miller looked fantastic. He uh, gets a third round submission. That was surprising. And then I just kind of had some some flashbacks of how, how great he was until he lost to Nate Diaz. That was like that um, contender <laughs> match, too. Yeah. But shout out Jim Miller, man. Inspirational. Um, the main event of the evening, Anka Live gets a second round knockout against Johnny Walker. Crazy, crazy um, power from Magomed. What are you guys' thoughts on that fight? Johnny Walker, let me start by saying Johnny Walker is like a f- real life cartoon character, bro. <laughs> but like the, mo- like the movement and like the way he fights is just so crazy, bro. Like he's about to pull out like a, like one of them big cartoon hammers like from behind his back, bro, at any second. That's how I watch Johnny Walker fight, bro. Dead ass. And, like, Uncle I have, like, did the smart thing, bro. Like, when you get fighters that like to move around a lot and, and, and have a lot of extra movement, just stay true to your fundamentals, walked them down the whole time, landed the shot you wanted to land. Give him Poton. That's the only fight that makes sense, bro. And he'll said, he said he'll stand with them, too. It don't matter. Go crazy. I, I like that fight a lot. Um. That fight actually has me excited for the light heavyweight division uh, if they make it. Um, so 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing but th- you already know that's my uncrowned champ, Uncle Liar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Uncle Liar just did what he does best. He he just utilizes different his uh his distance very well. And um sorry, I just left. But when you said that, I just man, the way Johnny Walker when he gets hurt, he he's fucking hurt, dude. Yeah. It's so Bro. hard to recover with him. Oh man. Um I do like the <laughs> I do like the Poatan fight, bro. Like I said, like both guys are good at utilizing their distance. And if Uncle Live says he wants to stand with Poatan, that's that's good too, man. That that makes an exciting fight right there. I gotta know about those leg kicks, dude. If Mongo Med can handle the leg kicks from Poatan, it's gonna be a great hey, fight. But... Uncle Live has some good leg kicks himself too, bro. Yeah, he's yeah. doing some beautiful ones against Walker. But Poton, I will say Poton leg kicks will turn got will turn strikers into wrestlers. <laughs> yeah. Will turn strikers. Them bitches look heavy. Heavy and effortless, bro. It's crazy. Lizzo, Lizzo leg kicks. Them motherfuckers are landing hard, boy. Leaper bill legs. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, man, when uh when Mago Man hit him with that that last punch. And Johnny was just like, oh, my fuck. Like, <laughs> God, oh, my God, bro. I think he broke his nose. Like, Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah. shout out Johnny Walker, dude. He 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 looked great for a little bit. Um, He composed himself after he spent all that energy in the first couple minutes. Um, But uh, Magomed is just a different person. Um, Johnny Walker has had his his ups and downs, and this was one of his downs, unfortunately. But yeah, still a great. Fight. He looked great coming in. He can, he looked healthy, man, coming into that yeah. fight. Mm-hmm. Yep. But Uncle Live's just that guy, man. Jeez. Yeah, that's a tough fight. And like, I don't know, man. I'm just so. Every time I watch an Apex fight, I'm just like, why can't we just get a regular fucking octagon in there? I know. Why does it have to be so small? You don't like it. I don't know. It needs to be uniform, at least, you know. I like, yeah. I, I mean, most combat sports aren't like that. Boxing isn't like that. And I do like, I like the, the bigger octagon for championship fights. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't know. I'm just fucking. I'm talking just about that. <laughs> talking about championship fights, octagons. That'll lead us to UFC 297. <laughs> um, we shall do our lightning picks, starting from the very first fight of the night up until let's see. We can break down Charles Jordan a little bit. I don't care about Brad Katona. I don't give one. Arnold uh, Allen. Bit. And, and also, uh, the main uh, Allen up, up, we can break down. Yeah, I agree. All right. To start us off in the flyweight division, we have Canadian uh, Mal- Malcolm Gordon versus Jimmy Flick. Straight out of Kansas City looking dude. What do you think, King? Who you got? Uh, I got <laughs> Jimmy Flick by decision. <laughs> Uh, Malcolm Gordon by decision. Uh, I'll go Malcolm by decision. Next up, we have Canadian Jasmine Jasuda Vicious versus Priscilla Cachoeira. I have uh, Priscilla by decision. Jasmine by decision. I have uh, Jasmine by decision as well. Next up in the welterweight division, Johan uh, Lanace versus Sam Patterson. Uh, Patterson by decision as well. Sam Patterson, TKO. Oh, um, I'm going to go with Johan. But I think that's a sleeper fight. I think that will be a good fight. Doc. Isn't Sam Patterson that all last dude that got knocked out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I just, I just want to make sure. I was thinking about the same thing. What are you trying to say? <laughs> uh, next up in the women's straw weight division we have jillian robertson i didn't know she was canadian versus pollyanna vienna pollyanna by uh tko mm. pollyanna submission interesting um i'm gonna go jillian by submission i like that if she can take her to the ground we'll see 
uh, in the Bantamweight division, we have the UFC debuts of Serhei Cide, Cide versus Ramon Tavares. After they just fought on Contender Series. Mm-hmm. I'll go same result. I'm going to go uh, Cide, Cide uh, by TKO. Cide, KO. Oof. I'm going to go Tavares by, uh, um, what's it called? Team Alpha Male Guillotine. Next up in the featherweight division, my preliminary uh, highlight fight. Charles Jordan. Charles Air Jordan versus Sean the St. Louis Sniper Woodson. Who are you bro, guys got in this one? I love Charles Jordan, bro. I love him. But I think Woodson wins this fight, dog. I think Woodson wins by decision. I th- I think oh. it depends on uh, how aggressive Charles Jordan wants to be. I think uh, when guys try to bully Woodson, uh, they have success. Um, and obviously Charles Jordan is no stranger to, to being aggressive. But the problem everybody has is the length of Woodson. He, he fights so long and uh, carries so much power with his length. Uh, I think, I- if anything... He's going to be able to keep him off him uh, for the entirety of the fight and and even damage Jordan a little bit. Jordan, another thing with Jordan, bro, is he's not scared to get hit. So I think he, he's going to get beat up a little bit. I'm going to go Woodson by this year. I think, is, I think this is going to be in competition as fight of the night, but it's not going to be talked about type fight. Mm. Um, so- yeah, I think it'll be a super close stand-up fight. Charles Jordan decision. I think Charles Jordan gets in that pocket. Of course, he's going to take a couple punches. Sean <laughs> has like just about a 10-inch reach advantage over Jordan. But um, we've seen that Jordan uh, can fight in the pocket. He looks great. Striking-wise, um, he's smart, too. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't get down and grapple with fucking Crown Gracie. But he did what he had to do. He stood up when he stood up in that fight. He let Crown Gracie stand up. I just think Char- Jordan will uh, sneak in a little bit and get a knockout. Um, second round knockout for Jordan. Um, and then next up in the Bantamweight division, we have... The Ultimate Fighter winner, Brad Katona versus Garrett Armfield. I like uh, Katona by decision. Uh, damn. Katona decision. I'll take Armfield by knockout. All right, it's time to break down the main card to open up the fight. Uh, to open up the main card, I should say, is number four ranked Arnold Allen. Versus number nine ranked Mavsar Evloev. Who you guys got? I have Arnold Allen by a convincing decision. <clears throat> a convincing decision. I think he beats him up. I think he beats Evloev up. And I think the last fight, uh, Max was his last fight, right? Yeah. I think that fight was one of those fights where even when you lose, you where guys improve so much in losses just by like fighting, like guys that are so great. You know what I mean? Like Max, bro. I think, uh, Alan learned a lot. I think, uh, it made him a way better fighter. Um, and I think, uh, he beats up evil left. Arnold or Alan by decision. Mm-hmm. Convincing. A part of me has to say like evil love doesn't get enough love for how good he is as a fighter, but, Arnold Allen is just a fucking monster, dude. Um, I like that King brought up Max's fight. I think Arnold going into this fight, it's like nothing can get worse than my last fight. Mm-hmm. And I can only improve from there. And I think in this fight, he'll, 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 he'll in a way force Mosbar to trade with him. Kind of get in the pocket, but then he'll, he'll, he'll set up traps because Arnold Allen is so good at fighting on his heels, you know, counter attacks, follow up strikes. I think he's going to, he, it's going to go to a decision and it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a very dominant decision too. 
Um, I'm with you guys. I'm going Arnold Allen by decision. Um, solely because I like the guy. Uh, he's <laughs> super kind, <laughs> soft spoken. But on the other side, I mean, Ivlov looked great against his fight against Diego Lopez. Um, who knows? Diego Lopez might just be the next top five guy. I'm sure he will be pretty soon. But um, it was kind of a struggle. It was surprising because I think that was like my first time watching Ivlov fight. And knowing that he was ranked, I was kind of expecting a little bit more. Um, but it's always tricky when you have those like last minute, late notice fighters. Um, and people people forget how good he looked against Ige too. Yeah, mm. you give Ige yeah. no space. Dude. Ige was just has having second thoughts, like what yeah. the fuck? Like I can't yeah. do anything now. Um, One thing I like about Allen though that that made me pick him over Evil because at, at first I, I was having trouble. Like I didn't know really know how it was going to go. I didn't want to base off. Um, the last fight with with Diego Lopez, um, but that even in like the later rounds with Max, like I never wavered. He was getting beat up, never wavered, never didn't look crazy exhausted. You know what I mean? For even taking that much damage, um, I think if Evil does get takedowns, Allen's going to be able to get back up. Um, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, just your classic striker versus grappler fight. Um, I just don't know what Arnold Allen's ground game looks like. Uh, but before that Max fight, Allen was what, 10-0? and 0? He was on a 10-fight win streak. So I'm, I'm going Arnold Allen. Um, that last fight shouldn't have uh, demotivated Allen. Um, in the middleweight division, we have number 14 ranked Chris Action Man Curtis versus Mark andre Berriolt. Who you guys got? I got uh, Curtis by KO. I think uh, Burial likes to with the guys that we've seen beat Curtis lately are guys that want to point fight Curtis um, that don't give him the opportunity to do what he does best, and that's counter punch. I think Burial likes to get into a firefight. He gets sucked into firefights really easily. Um, I could see him like even maybe hurting Curtis. And, and maybe thinking, maybe getting too comfortable standing in boxing range with them because we know that's what Curtis is going to want to do. Um, I think if Burial can throw more kicks, he could have some success, but uh, I think he's going to maybe get tunnel vision, and I think uh, Curtis is going to catch him. I'll go Curtis by TKO. Yeah. Um, Mark has this trend of like losing the first or second round, coming back the third strong, too. Um, he loves getting in the pocket. I don't. I just don't think he can do that with Chris Curtis in this fight. No, and it's a three round fight. Um. Yeah, I think in the second or third round, Chris Curtis is going to catch him. Uh, I know he likes to get. Both these guys like to get into wars, but I just think Chris Curtis is a better fighter when it comes to that. Um, I'm going Chris Curtis with the same exact reasons you guys said. Um. Chris Curse is hoping and praying that he just trades bombs with uh with Marc Andre Berriolt. Uh and yeah, I mean I'm just mirroring what you guys are saying. He Berriolt is not the person to to point fight, to make a smart fight. Um he's in there for wars and that's it. Um so I'm going Chris Curtis. I think it just goes to decision though. Um Chris Curtis has kind of I don't know. It just feels like nothing is really set up, in my opinion. Um, he could throw in a lot better combinations, but he, yeah, go ahead. Just over the last couple fights, it to me, it just looks like Chris Curtis is solely counterpunching. Yeah, he's not really setting anything up with jabs. He's not really moving forward uh, with any other punches. Um, he's kind of just keeping real tight defense. His defense is pretty good. Um, but really, he's just looking for aggressive guys to, to start swinging in and, and then land that check hook or land like a an uppercut on their way in. Um, so I think it depends on that, bro. And and but we've seen Barry all be aggressive. And that's the, that's the biggest reason why I'm picking Curtis. On paper, uh, that's what it looks like to me. We never know. Barry could come in with a whole different game plan, be a, a whole different fighter in a whole different mindset. But um, we'll Yeah, see. I mean, all if... Burial decides to go with the Jack Hermanson route. Jack Hermanson was pissing the fuck out of Chris Curtis because he was point fighting and he was 
running, not running away, but he was keeping distance when he needed to. Smart. And and the thing is, is like when you have a guy like that, Chris, you know, and I'm, I'm just a guy, bro. I'm just a guy. But like professional fighters at the highest level, when you see guys like that, I imagine they're very easy to game plan for. You know what I mean? Um, but it's easier said than done. You know what I mean? To go in there and try to point fight a counter striker that's fast, so fast at uh, middleweight like Chris Curtis. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Or maybe it ends by Chris Curtis by uh eyebrow cut that gets uh disqualified or canceled, yeah. you know. And Barrio isn't no punk, bro. If Chris Curtis gets caught looking, if he gets caught watching, Barrio will knock his ass out. <laughs> For real. You got the Canadian crowd too, bro. This shit's gonna be fireworks in there. Um all right, next in the welterweight division, number 13 ranked Neil Magny takes on uh, Canada born Mike Mallet or Malote? I Mallet. think it's Malote. Mallet? Okay. Oh, okay. Bro. Oh, I'm not Canadian. Mallet by sub, bro. <laughs> Mallet by sub, of course, dog. Holy shit. I love seeing Mallet, bro. Mallet might be one of my, he might be one of my favorite. Unranked fighters. I, I love seeing that. Um, yeah, Malibu sub, dog. Um, damn. I don't want to base it off Neil Maggi's last fight. That was fucking bad. But that's got, got to kind of take a toll on him. How, how just how, how bad it it's felt. Yeah. Performing like that. Um, and still, what's going on with him with like the custody battle? Like, it can't be good for you, man. Going into a fight. Um, this is a good fight for him. It's a big fight. Young and upcoming dude. Mike Mallett, Malote. <laughs> the guy likes to put on pressure, man. Um, and I feel I feel when you don't give Neil Magny th- his distance and you like, you know, you keep a tight space, he really has problems fighting off his uh his heels. So I think uh go Mike Mallet by submission. Yeah, I'm going with the the hometown boy. Um he's got all of Canada behind him. I'm gonna go Mike Mallet by Man, it's it's probably hard to knock out Neil Magny, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm gonna go with Mike Mallet by by finish. I just don't know what, but um I agree with you guys. It's Neil Magny does not look good when he has to fight fighting backwards. If Neil Magny does win, it's it's going to be boring. He's going to push him up against a cage. He's going to do what he does best, use his height. Um, but Neil Magny has never had, like, pretty wins. He's always had pretty uh, ugly wins, I would say. So that's the only thing I can see going Neil Magny's way. But Mike Mallet has a lot <clears throat> behind him, so I'm going with Mike by uh, by finish. For the women's vacant Bantamweight title, we have number two ranked Raquel Pennington versus number three ranked Myra Bueno Silva. How do you guys see this? I like uh, Bueno Silva by submission. Um, <laughs> she got the crazy eyes, dude. <laughs> she does. She does have the crazy eyes. Um, yeah. When's the last time Bueno Silva fought? Uh, she fought Holly Holm uh, in July last year. Yeah, man. Okay. I, what happened with the no contest? I forgot. She oh, tested yeah. positive, I think. Right. Oh, that's right. When it's that's right. Tested positive. That's right. But that was yeah. because she had she had said that she has like ADHD or something. Allegedly, know. yeah, I got ADHD too, bitch. What are we talking about? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My bad, bro. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, man. <laughs> when a silver by submission, bro. Yeah, uh, Myra is just a savage on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to be down there with her, especially a girl like Pennington, who we've seen people have exposed her down there. Um, and we got we got to think back about when Silva fought Manon. Like, although she lost that fight, bro, she looks so good in there. Um, yeah. And Manel's no punk, bro. She's no punk, and that that was that was a great fight. Um, Bueno Silva by submission. 
Yeah. Uh, bueno Silva by by submission. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be fast. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna be in and out probably. First round, early second round. I wouldn't be shocked. Um. You you guys know how I am. Out with the old, in with the new. Trying to get these older women's fighters out of the UFC because the new the new girls are just killing it right now. So I would love to see Bueno Silva on top. I know this sounds like a down, but obviously, like uh, we got women's MMA like in, on the mainstream like later. You know what I mean? But I feel like right now women's MMA is going through that like revolution that like men's MMA did like mid 2010s where like you're starting to you're you're not really seeing like people that are I'm not saying okay uh women's MMA isn't well rounded but just these girls these up and coming girls like you were saying like I think he's like fixing something go ahead uh Manon and uh, Buena Silva like they look so sharp in every aspect like before, like same way, like early UFC, you would see guys that specialize in one thing that are kind of rough around the edges. They can manage in other areas of the fight game. But these new girls are so good everywhere in the fight. It's it, yeah. it, it's great to see. And honestly, like you said, bro, it's out with the old, in with the new, I think, you know. For the main event of the evening, I am so excited to hear what you guys think about this fight. Um Middleweight champion oh. Sean Strickland is. Y'all hear that? On, huh? Y'all hear that? A little bit. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. You mother. Uh, Sean Strickland is taking on number two ranked title shot contender Drykus Du Plus C. Um, I do have a few questions I want to ask you guys before you guys get into uh, who you think is going to win. Which fight surprised you guys most? Was it Duplessis beating Whitaker by knockout, or was it Strickland beating Adesanya? You know what's crazy? Uh, uh, Drickus beating Whitaker was crazier to me. Strickland, I think, has always been a good fighter, has always been up there. He's always beaten great fighters. And I think... um, you know, Izzy was a huge, obviously, jump, bro. That king of the hill, you know what I mean? Um, seeing him beat up Izzy like that was crazy. But Rob was the guy. Like, Rob is was the gatekeeper of the middleweight division. Nobody else is – you got to fight Rob. You got to get through Rob to get to Izzy, you know what I mean? And literally, uh, he, he was – Rob was beating – pretty much clearing the division out for Izzy just so he could fight – Izzy again, you know what I mean? And we've been seeing that for like the last few years. And uh, Drickus, a guy who I thought was, um, they were sick and tired of rotating like these top five middleweights through Rob. I thought, oh, give Drickus a shot. See what he can do. I thought Drickus didn't have a chance. And he surprised me, bro. Uh, he surprised me. It's crazy. It's a good question, though. Got, that's a good question, yeah. If you got to compare it to it, I, I got to go Drickus. Um Just because, like, going looking back at the Darren Till fight, like, the dude had no cardio. I get, like, his nostrils all messed up, but, like, him coming back, finishing Whitaker the way he did, and also showcasing how great his cardio is, um, th- it makes this fight so scary, dude. Like, mm-hmm. it... it, it just thinking all day before we came on the podcast, I'm like, who am I going to say yeah, is going to yeah. win this fight? You know? Because it could go either way now. Because we know how dangerous, how much power he packs. And now his cardio is here, which we, I think he can keep up with Sean Strickland in this fight. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Um, Let's get yeah. into it. <laughs> I, I'm in total agreement with you guys. I knew Sean Strickland had the cardio to fight five rounds with Izzy. Um I believe when we were doing our predictions, both Rob and I thought it would be Izzy by decision, but we just thought it'd be like Izzy could out box, outstrike Sean Strickland. <clears throat> but watching that 
Whitaker fight, I just could not believe that after taking a couple punches, the takedown was gnarly. Rob Whitaker was like the ground and pound was nasty from Duplessis. Um, I just could not believe Duplessis could finish Rob Whitaker like that. Exactly. Um, so uh, going into this fight, where it's like, was is Sean Strickland strictly just an Izzy beater? Is that it? Or are we going to see the same thing with Duplessis? Um, let me hear your guys' thoughts on that one. Bro, you, I'm about to fucking... That was, that's my main fucking point, bro. Is Strickland just an Izzy beater? Bro. Sickening, <laughs> dog. Um, I don't know, man. I th- I got Strickland by TKO. Uh, oh. Later round TKO, I'm going to go fourth round TKO. Um, to me, I think Strickland is just more proven. I think Strickland has fought the top guys. Um, and I don't know, uh, Drickus could, could prove me wrong. You know what I mean? I feel like I haven't seen enough of Drickus, but like, uh, plenty of fights. Like I thought, uh, Strickland could, was going to lose. Um, and really like the only loss that really has stood out to me is Pote's on, you know what I mean? Like, other than that, like, I don't see, um, even like the fight with Jared Cannonier, split decision, I thought he might have won that fight, um, has, has beaten plenty of, of top guys, man, I'm, I mean, maybe, and the best coach in the game, bro, Eric Nixick is going to come up with a, with a great game plan, um, ah, extreme, <laughs> <laughs> and I could be wrong, bro. Maybe I just haven't seen enough of Drickus. If if Drickus wins this fight in a dominating fashion, uh, call me a fan, bro, because I will be. You know what I mean? Um, no, you won't. But as right, huh? No, you won't. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But <laughs> I'm going to go uh, Sean Strickland by TKO, fourth round TKO. Okay. I kind of want, want to go back to the Whitaker fight again because, bro, it was just so intriguing to me. Um, God damn. Trickus is just a, he's such a threat. Um, I already forgot what I was going to say. Do you, King? You motherfucker, dude. Oh, that was real. Let him talk. <laughs> um, oh. All I got to say in this fight coming up, like, we know how much power he packs. We know the cardio's there. But when it comes to fighting Strickland, Everyone thinks they can beat Strickland until they get in the pocket with him. In this fight, it, it's it's hard to predict because both these guys like to put the pressure. They, they don't like fighting off their back, fighting, you know, stepping back or anything. They like to come forward. So with this fight, it just comes down to who's going to be more successful in the pocket. Oh, here, I, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Going back to the Whitaker, Whitaker fight, it wasn't just the power. That threw uh, Whitaker off, but it was the follow-up shots with the counters. I think that's going to be the biggest threat with Strickland. Because um, Strickland will throw, he'll get countered, and it's kind of that's it. But he need. I think they're, they're going to do a good job preparing for that. Because the way Duplessis likes to follow up the shots with the counters, that, that's, that's the biggest threat, I think. Other than that, if Sean Strickland can put up with that, Get him to wars. Get in the pocket. Overwhelm Duplessis. Get the finish. Sean Strickland, defending champ. Fourth round finish. Crazy. Another thing I don't like, and obviously this could be mind games, bro. Um, but as a fight, like some, like if, you, like same thing, bro. If you talk about something enough, it it become you become it. You know what I mean? Drickus is talking like this fight is going to be easy. Like, he's going to walk through Sean Strickland. And that's crazy to me. Like, he's going to KO him in it easily. That's crazy to me. I think he thinks the same thing. I think he thinks if he gets Sean Strickland on his back foot, get him moving backwards, he, he can stop him. And, you know, like you said, he hasn't had a lot of success on his back foot before. But I don't know. We'll see. Listen, don't know. before the Whitaker fight, I was like, this fucking Duplessis motherfucker is getting so lucky. He beat. <laughs> 
uh, a fat Darren Till, not convincingly to me. He beat Derek Brunson, not convincingly to me. That fight was ridiculous. It looked so goofy. But when he fought Robert Whitaker, and, and he was talking shit, he's like, I'm going to finish Rob Whitaker. I didn't believe him, and he finished Rob Whitaker. So I think I am going to go with Duplessis <laughs> by, uh, by TKO. Um, it's going to be a TKO. Yeah. One side or the other, man. Yeah. Um, I don't... I just, I don't know, man. I've never seen Sean Strickland on the ground. It could be different on the ground. Uh, Duplessis has a very heavy, heavy base. That dude has a fucking triangle back, dude. I think it's going to be hard for Sean Strickland to get back up. But it just depends on what kind of Sean Strickland we're going to see. I've always said that Sean Strickland never really turns it up when he should be because he has unlimited amounts of cardio he throws pillow punches sometimes before this is he fight um so i was very much a uh i was a hater of sean strickland because of that because i know that he had a lot more to give and he just didn't give it was like i was watching this uh a sparring match whenever i saw a sean strickland fight so i'm gonna go with the unknown because this is gonna be like Drakus's second fight with his nose cleared up. Apparently, his cardio is going to be great. I'm going with Drakus by uh, DKO. The crazy part is, like, I'm not mad at it, but like you said, bro, it's just like Drakus is like picking Drakus is like a mystery box. Yeah, yeah. Like you never know because we've seen so many versions of Drakus, you never know what you're going to get. I feel like mm-hmm. so. I mean, I'm not mad at it, but the Drakus that we've seen against Robert Whitaker, shit, scary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, and even before that, like, the earliest fight I saw of Drakus was when he beat Brad Tavares, and that was three rounds of destruction from, from Drakus. So um, I'm not sure what happened in between with the with the cardio issue, but I'm I'm going for Drakus, dude. Uh, Africa's very first champ in the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Kamaru. It ain't Francis Ngannou. It ain't Mike Perry. It ain't Israel Adesanya. It's Drick is Duplessis. Um, so that's my pick. And that concludes our UFC 297 picks. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? Real quick, before I get called the R word by anybody, it was Casey Kenny I was thinking of that Dominic Cruz beat, not Stamen. Uh, Stamen is the South African kid, right? Casey no, Kenny is who I was thinking of. Or Simon, Simon, Simon. Okay, whoever it was, I was wrong. It's uh, Simon is that like fucking 80s wrestler body, right? He looks freaking huge. Who? Stamen? That's what I thought. Casey Kenny is who I thought Stamen. And Casey Kenny is built like that. I don't know. I don't know then. Oh, but yeah. Just to... He has that. Uh... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like a WWE wrestler. Facts. Um, song suggestions? Anybody? What well, um, album are we going off of? <laughs> what element? What um, album? Album? I yeah. am not going to pick a song off of 21's or Kid Cudi's album. Me either. Okay. I'll go Blue Sky, Kid Cudi. Next week, I'll do that. Um, I'm going to go Lego Ring by Faye Webster and Lil Yachty. Ew. I'm going to go Vaudeville Villain, MF Doom. MF Doom. Rest in peace, MF Doom. Rip, 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 rip. All right. Thank you guys for watching today's episode. Thank you for supporting us. We will see y'all next week when we talk about our reactions to UFC 297 as well as give our predictions for nothing because there's not a fight after that. (laughs) Uh, Peace out. Ah, Peace.